Hey guys, it's Boo from Mile High Distilling. Here at Mile High, we truly believe that every fermentation has something going for it. Did you mess up pitching your yeast and your alcohol percentage is really low? Well, you can still run that and you can basically collect what you can collect and then use it as feints for a future batch and get an updated alcohol volume in your next batch. Or maybe your fermentation smelled amazing, you went to distill it, something went wrong, it didn't come out good. Well, for there, I mean, we have tons of additives and different things we can try to maybe fix that spirit. We can try glycerin finishing formula. We can try putting it under oak and smoothing it out. We could look at really just filtering it entirely. There's multiple things we can do to potentially fix that spirit. And I believe every fermentation has some potential until I made this one. This one was just scum of the earth, this fermentation probably steals from kids. This fermentation smells like baby diarrhea, rolled around in motor oil and took a bath with sewer water to clean itself off. It's just terrible for multiple reasons. On top of that, there's almost zero alcohol percentage on it. I think there's like 3% alcohol. And we'll discuss more on that fermentation and what went into it, as well as what we're going to be doing to try to fix it. Today on this channel, we're here at Bomber Peak Distillery, and we are going to be using everything we've learned from this channel, as well as using the vast array of distilling equipment that Mile High Distilling offers on our shop to put everything together and hopefully fix what should be a pretty much ruined mash. Now, I've already taken care of putting everything in here. We couldn't stand the smell any longer. It's in the boiler. It's ready to go, and we are starting to heat up. Now, all that's going to be left to do is wait for things to heat up, then we'll talk more about our strategy going forward and basically what this fermentation is. Guys, we are technically heated up. Now there's a reason you're not seeing anything coming out even though by all means we feel that tower, it's fully heated. We're gonna explain a little bit about that. First, let's talk about what this fermentation was. So, months back, we went ahead and tried to make basically a bloody butcher corn whiskey. In that time, I'm almost positive that I overcook things, which I think contributed to the vile smell this fermentation gives off. Uh, there's almost like a burntness to it, which I think attributes to it, as well as I'm pretty sure that completely tanked my alcohol content in the fermentation. Um, the way I see it, and I really don't know enough about science or distilling to really validate this, but I think those bonds of the sugar will say, got overcooked and it cooked out a lot of what could have been turned into alcohol, I guess. I don't know. Terrible explanation, but that's just how I see things. Now, number two, this one's real bad on my part. I willingly ran and cooked this fermentation in an already infected pot. This had some sort of infection in it in the kettle and uh, I ran the corn whiskey through it just because I didn't know any better. I didn't really think it'd carry over, and uh, yeah. So what we have is basically an infected, burnt, low alcohol content fermentation. This thing cannot be saved by doing stripping modes or anything like that. We know because we've tried. I didn't just make one of these, I made three of these. So we've tried stripping runs, trying to correct things. We've tried post-processing, post-infusion, uh, oak aging to see if anything would really work, and nothing quite did. So today, I'm standing here with this beautiful machine. These are for people very serious, hobby distillers, as well as you'll see versions like this or perhaps this exact unit in professional distilleries a lot of the time. Now these are wonderful because what they have are plates in between each of these sections and each of these sections is capable of basically a, another distillation. That's sort of a marketing ploy, but Basically, we're coming out very clean. We've given up trying to get flavor out of this. At this point, we're just going to try to correct it into a neutral spirit, a very pure, clean one. So as far as things are happening on this unit, we have this amazing machine that's great at what it does already. That's gonna give us an advantage. And on top of that, we've learned quite a lot in this whole career on YouTube, okay? Recently, you might have seen our past distilling duel video, and you saw we did bubble plates versus downcomer plates. Now, even though that duel ended up in a tie, 
what we really feel is that in terms of like the smoothness of spirit, we think the bubble plates took that one, okay? It might not have won in speed, might not have won in cleaning, but I think it'll produce a well-rounded spirit more than the downcomer plates were. So we're gonna have those bubble plates in there just from what we've learned in that video. And on top of that, one tip we've looked at doing is you'll see copper packing completely full in each of these sections on top of those plates. Now I think that's gonna give us some nice passive reflux. I think it's gonna help things clean up even a little bit more. And so everything equipment wise, I think we're gonna come out pretty strong, but we'll just have to see. This is an attempt. I can't promise we will do it. We're gonna try. Furthermore on tips and tricks, what I have going on here is basically I have my needle valve, a high precision control valve on my deflagmator. That's gonna give me really nice solid control on my deflagmator and that should hopefully help our reflux process. And what I'm doing right now with the machine is I have that needle valve cranked all the way up. Now what the attempt to do there is, is I'm trying to put it in full reflux mode. Basically, where things are still happening on the reflux side of things, but nothing's coming over. I'm taking all that methanol, I'm trying to clean things up a little bit, drop it back down to the boiler, it'll reboil as lighter vapors, more pure vapors we'll say, and if I hold it there for, I'm thinking with our alcohol content at around 3%, maybe 10 minutes or so, that should be the majority of our methanol. It's always still gonna be in that boiler. It's always gonna still come over in the spirit, but I hope we'll clean out enough to where the first stuff that comes over is decent enough to be palatable and drinkable. Another tip that we've heard time and time again through distillers that have been at this decades from professional distillers is low and slow is really the name of the game. So. During our heat up process, not really sure how much that matters. That was heated up like normal. But now that we're in the distilling process, we have our controller, our heating device at a relatively low amperage. And basically we're gonna push this thing really as slow as it goes. For the alcohol percentage we're getting over, it's worth it to spend maybe 30 minutes filling up a jar. Honestly, um, I don't think we're gonna get too much. I'm gonna guess three, four jars maybe, but Again, I'm worth, it's worth spending the time to distill that out slow and get the best quality we possibly can out of what's already ruined. If we go too fast, there's no way to really correct ourselves again. So we'll take it slow. We'll try to do it right the first time and hopefully we come out pretty clean. So we have just a few more minutes on the deflagmator going through that full reflux mode. We'll push everything over, check our proof, take a little sample, try not to die and Go from there. Okay. And as you can see, hopefully, we have started to drip. We are sitting almost right at 190 proof. Maybe about 187. Pretty good drip for 187, I'd say. We can even turn that flow down more, and we likely will. However, I am curious what's coming out at 187. So for now, let's go ahead and hold. We'll take our first shot and proceed from there. There's a very intense sweetness to that. Definitely still some heads. Definitely still some heads. It's 185 proof, so maybe that's the heads that I am tasting, because it's very sweet. So with our first jar, this is, was about 188 or so, and we went ahead and diluted it down to about 90, 93, I think. Compared to what it was, I think it's pretty phenomenal, actually, if you look at it like that. We managed to clean this up considerably, We've gotten rid of the bitterness that came over in past stripping runs of this and trying to when we tried to reclaim it the first time around. There's no bitterness involved. Obviously, very, very strong coming out the gate because of that higher proof. As far as flavor coming over, no, we are not eliminating all flavor with what we have going on. I'm surprised by that a little bit, I guess, but there's still some residual flavor left over. What that residual flavor is, you couldn't really ask me because I would have no clue what to tell you. I'd probably just start speaking gibberish. I have really no clue what's going on. I'm tasting almost like a medicine-y component to this. Um, almost, I mean, very, very sweet, but, but medicine a little bit and really just, I don't know, especially because I made this, I fermented this, I can't get out of my head that infection and I think we're just basically drinking infected booze. 
Will it kill us? I'm not dead yet, so who knows? <laughs> no, it, it, it won't. We're safe there. But I want to try to get rid of whatever that flavor is. I guess it's just an off flavor, totally drinkable, but as far as we can go in, I wanna see just how far we can go in this, I guess. So what we'll do is we'll distill, keep this same flow. We're basically at a drip, 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 and produce what we can from there. And then what we'll probably end up doing is we're gonna go ahead and filter this once we get back to the shop. I think filtering is going to hopefully remove that component of it. Um, from there, we'll probably maybe do a little bit of tests. And if we're still not liking what we've got, we can always look at a few additives that might get rid of that, um, or at least mask it, I guess. From where this was compared to where it is, I would consider this a fairly successful test. I think there's still work that needs to be done, which we will be doing, because again, we don't just have to employ what we know on distilling here. We have post methods that we can incorporate in to potentially fix our spirit. So we're just gonna keep playing with this. We're gonna get what we can out. We're liking it enough to make it, I think, decent the way it is already. And so if it's good now, I think if we can do a few other tactics post distillation, we can improve it even more. I guess one last thing while we continue to run, I think it's shot time. Now while I'm filling this up guys, I wanna remind you all, we appreciate your support so much. If you've enjoyed this video so far, you've liked what you saw, please be sure to like this video. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and also look down below. We have a bunch of social media content on all our other platforms. You can find all that down below. I think for this episode, we should cheers and remind ourselves that even the most horrid, ugly thing has potential. Cheers to that, guys. All right, guys, so run completed here. So we're getting about what we expected out of that lower ABV solution. It's pretty interesting how drastic things changed. We got two jars worth of what is pretty much hearts all throughout, and those are gonna be very clean, very neutral. Uh, slight change in smell, but for the most part, just a neutral spirit. And then as far as they taste, we dial things back. We kept one jar at 190, uh, which we'll probably dilute later on. And then one we brought down to about 100. We found about 50%, 100 proof, was a good blend of just that residual sugar, the residual sweetness that we get while still maintaining, not having things burn too bad going down. Uh, it's still very neutral, but it's got a nice sweetness to it. We can still not really place how to describe that sweetness, but it's pretty pleasant. And the other two jars here are when we got into our tails and those started producing decently, but we started getting more of that grain chalkiness coming through. They're still drinkable. And so I think as far as things go, this experiment was completely worth it. We didn't receive much, but what we did receive helped save that fermentation. We could have just pitched it and not got anything at all. So four is better than zero. I think all in all, we had fun with this experiment. It was really cool to see just how much processing power we can put in to this machine and produce the best we can from what should have been pretty much ruined. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Boo from the future. If you haven't guessed by the whole Bomber Peak scenario going on in these past few videos, these were filmed uh, I think around September or so of 2024. I was just kind of storing them. We had our whole like Halloween themed in October and then we went to Thanksgiving theme. So I've just kind of had these videos on the back pile waiting for those theme videos to pass. Hope you enjoyed it. I really was very happy with how that spirit came out. Because this was filmed so long ago, I unfortunately lost some of my footage. So here I am kind of doing the outro and also explaining a little bit more about the filtration we did. Unfortunately, that was lost footage, but filtration did everything we had hoped for. That spirit came out so clean, just a nice moonshine, a nice vodka, 190 proof that we diluted back to, uh, I think about 40% uh, 80 proof. And man, it was so delicious. I really wish that the computer monitors or TVs you guys are watching this on had like smell of vision so you could really understand exactly what we were dealing with before we tried cleaning up. The fact that we took something that smelled so horrid like that 
and turn it into like a sweet residual sugar vodka. Honestly, I love distilling for reasons like this, okay? I'm glad with what we did here today. I really hope you guys don't get discouraged. If you were in your mashes, there is always things you can do. Anyways, just sending this video off because I lost the footage before. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.